Before this video starts, please note that everything said in this video could change in the future, as this is a live service game and patches made after this video's release date could alter or revert changes in features. This also includes Pokemon spawn locations and the amount of Pokemon available. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all enjoy the video. Hi everyone! Achievements have always been a staple of Pokemon Planet. It allows the developers to both reward you for completing challenges, as well as lock special locations and items behind them. They also give players something to strive for. I mean, that's kind of the point of achievements. One of the most important and one of the most sought after achievements in the entire game is the Collector 3 achievement. In this video, I'll be going over what the achievement is and why you should get it, some general guidelines to help you complete this achievement, including a step-by-step -step walkthrough, some good Pokemon to take to grind in Mossy Cave, and some information on Megastone grinding. And as you could probably tell by the duration of this video, we're in for a long ride. So get ready, because we've got a lot to cover. By the way, I recently started a Discord server for my YouTube channel, so if you'd like to check that out, there will be a link in the description with all of my socials. Before we do anything, we have to ask two important questions. What and why? First, what is the Collector 3 achievement? The Collector 3 achievement is an achievement for catching and registering 350 unique Pokemon in your Pokedex. This is just like filling up your Pokedex in any other Pokemon game, so you don't have to worry about getting every Pokemon at every evolution stage. No, none of that. You just need one Pokemon, and once you catch a Pokemon or evolve it, that Pokemon will stay caught in your Pokedex forever. However, unlike every other Pokemon game, you can't really just have someone trade you the entire Dex. If someone trades you a Pokemon, it registers as owned in your Pokedex, not caught. This doesn't apply to evolutions of traded Pokemon, but I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll cover that in a little bit. Now, the second question is why? Why should I get this achievement? Well, there are two big reasons that people go for this achievement. The first reason for getting this achievement is to get the Mossy Key as a reward for completion and gaining access to Mossy Cave. Mossy Cave is an area in Johto where you can find and catch many exclusive Pokemon, including the legendary beasts. The second reason that people want to get this achievement is that it allows you to have a chance of certain Megastones dropping from wild Pokemon while you're on specific maps. This is a little bit more of a recent thing as it was only added in a couple months ago, but since new Megastones have been added, and well, people think Megas are cool, naturally more people started going for this achievement. We'll talk more about Megas later in this video. So with that covered, the big question is... How do we go about getting this achievement? Well, there's no right or wrong way to get this achievement. It's a pretty simple goal. Catch and evolve different types of Pokemon until you have 350. However, a lot of players really don't know where to start, and like I said, you can't just have someone trade you the entire dex because it won't count. So in this video, I'll be going through every area in the game and catching and checking off everything we can in order of rarity so that I can show you one of the most efficient ways to get to 350 dex. However, there's a few problems. The main problem is that players will have completely different and varying experiences. Whether that's encounters, or money, or something else. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, let's say we have two players. Player A and Player B. Let's assume that they're both trying to hunt for the same Pokemon. For example, let's say that both of them want to catch Seal in the Whirl Islands. Seal is a very rare, so it'll potentially take them a while to find one, which is Actually, another factor, some people can spend less time hunting rare Pokemon than others, but I don't want to get sidetracked. Let's say they both go hunt it. Player A can come out with a seal, which was their intended target, and evolve it into Dugong. So now player A has two more Pokemon in their Pokedex. However, let's say that player B gets incredibly lucky and within the first few encounters gets a Sneasel instead of a Seal. Now let's say that player B decides to stay and follow through with their initial hunt and ends up coming out with a Seal and then shortly afterwards evolving it. So now instead of player A and player B having the same amount of Pokemon, Player A has two Pokemon, and Player B has three. It's really just a matter of luck. Now, whether or not Player A has the mental fortitude to go back and hunt an extremely rare is a matter of debate, but regardless, in a sense, 
The fact that Pokemon have rarities that vary drastically in encounter chance really messes with the amount of Pokemon players have reasonable access to, which in turn makes it hard to create a comprehensive guide that fits everyone's needs. Players can either get incredibly lucky and get all the rare Pokemon in an hour, or they could spend the next week hunting one specific Pokemon. And you could argue that this could apply to the mainline Pokemon games too. The problem with that is, encountering a Pokemon with a 1% encounter rate in the mainline Pokemon games is nothing compared to the encounter rates of up to 1 in 5,000 and even higher in Pokemon Planet. This is especially apparent when you factor in Safari Zones and other paid areas. Which leads me to my next point. Different players are willing to spend or save different amounts of money. For example, a rich player will be more willing to spend the money to go to a safari zone for multiple days in a row, while a player that doesn't have a lot of money will only afford to go buy a safari zone ticket when they really need to. Which again makes it hard when attempting to make a guide that's accessible to everyone. To add on to that, evolution stones tend to fluctuate in price on the global marketplace, making it harder for some players to obtain them. Another major problem is that some players just don't have access to areas that other players do. Let's bring back player A and player B. They both want to get the mossy key and are 100% committed to getting it at their current point in the game. Let's assume that player A is at the Sinnoh Elite 4, while player B is at the Hoenn Elite 4. Player A has access to several Pokemon that player B just can't get to yet. On top of that, some Pokemon just have better spots that you can hunt them in once you get to regions like Sinnoh and Unova. However, again, this is still all a matter of luck, and it goes back to the whole one person could be luckier than another in worse circumstances thing, but at this point we're just circling back to the other problem. Anyway, this causes several problems with getting dex entries. Player A has access to Pokemon like Krikatot, Bidoof, Stunky, and Finneon that player B just can't get to because of the point in the game that they're stuck at. So immediately player A has the advantage of getting more common Pokemon, while player B has to really grind to get very rare or extremely rare Pokemon if they both want to get the key. And of course this could be applied to other areas as well. Players stuck in Sinnoh are going to have a harder time than those in Unova. After a lot of time debating and with some help from others in the community, I've decided that for this video, we're going to cap our Pokemon encounters at the 8th gym of Unova. So, pretty much the end of the game. For three big reasons. One, because we have access to more common Pokemon than other regions. Two, because of the relatively recent Gym and Elite 4 stat nerfs, getting to Unova is easier than ever. And three, the Pokemon in Mossy Cave range at around level 80 to level 90. And while it's not the hardest area to grind in, it definitely requires you to build a couple teams and train certain Pokemon in order to effectively grind here. Team building is just so much easier the farther you are into the game. Personally, I think Unova is simply the best and most effective option. Having access to this region allows you to get a lot of Pokemon that you otherwise wouldn't have access to, which in turn saves you from the headache of trying to scramble to get very rares. While you can technically do this in Sinnoh or even Hoenn if you really grind hard enough, it just ends up becoming a massive pain when you're trying to struggle to get as many rare Pokemon as possible instead of training your team to get to Unova. I personally don't think it's worth it to go for this achievement until you have access to Unova, but that's just my two cents. And the final problem that comes with this topic are events and event exclusive Pokemon. This one's a pretty simple concept to understand. Some Pokemon are inaccessible outside of seasonal events and players that have been playing for longer will have an advantage if they've already caught these. They're far too situational and are only available for a limited time. So with all of the problems and variables laid out, I need you all to understand that this video is not a guide, or a walkthrough, or steps that you should follow. This video is not meant to be closely followed in any capacity. There's a large difference between each individual player, and random events such as randomly getting an extremely rare, or a swarm appearing on a route, or the amount of areas a player has access to is far too much for me to account for in this video to make a guide that appeals to everyone. Think of this video less of me telling you what to do, and more of me giving you ideas and tips of what you can do. Getting this achievement is a completely open experience that everyone can and should go about doing their own way, and the way I do it might not be the best for you. I recommend doing your own research as well. Head to the guide, map out everything you want to catch on a spreadsheet or something, and just go at it. Sift through your Pokedex and check what you do don't have. You can either pick a Pokemon from this video and go hunt that, or check the guide for another spawn. That being said, here are some tips to help you out if you get stuck on what to do next. Number 1. 
take advantage of events. As I mentioned before, you have access to exclusive Pokemon during events. Here's a list of every single event exclusive Pokemon. Each one usually has one or two evolutions, so I highly recommend picking them up while you can. Number two. You know those little swarm things that occasionally pop up for a couple hours? You know, the ones on the top left here? Yeah, abuse the hell out of them. Seriously, I think swarms are underappreciated. They of course allow you to get exclusive Pokemon, but on top of that, they give an area-wide encounter boost of 1.25 times to every rarity except for common. This means that even if you're not explicitly hunting for a Pokemon that's swarming, you can take advantage of the encounter rate boost to get pretty much anything else on the swarm map. For example, let's take Route 12. Route 12 is famously known for being an early location to find Snorlax as an extremely rare. Let's say that a swarm of Pansir and Pikachu has just appeared on Route 12. Now, you might not want Pansir or Pikachu, but as long as you're on that route, you'll get an encounter boost, which in turn boosts Snorlax's encounter rate. And this could be applied to a variety of different scenarios on a variety of different maps and areas. Do you see why I think swarms are just a little busted? But no, seriously, exploit the hell out of swarms. They'll save you a lot of trouble. Number three, make sure to check the guide to see a full list of every Pokemon available. If you do slash guide in the game and scroll down to this tab, you can view pretty much every single location of every Pokemon in the game. Just click the spoiler box, then press Control F and search for the Pokemon you want. It'll give you a full list of results to show you how and where you can get that specific Pokemon. It helps a lot when trying to find the best location to hunt something. There's also an entire public spreadsheet that you guys can check out on the guide. Just scroll down to the page with the Pokemon spawns and click this link. Then you can just make a copy and use it to its fullest extent. It really helps with keeping track of your Pokemon and I even used it for this video. And four. Use the global marketplace or trade for unevolved Pokemon that you don't have. I told you we'd circle back to this. This should really only be used as a last resort, but it helps if you're in a pinch. You can either buy or trade for rare unevolved Pokemon, either off the global marketplace or from other people, and evolve them to get a few dex entries. I would only advise buying extremely rares and other Pokemon that have unconventional methods of obtainment. For example, rolling from a shop or Pokemon box. Essentially what this does is it allows you to get dex entries for evolutions of Pokemon you don't have. For example, let's say I only need a couple more dex entries, so I decide to go buy a Machop. Machop is an extremely rare, and in order to get it, I would have to spend quite a bit of time grinding for it. So we go and search for a Machop on the global marketplace. Now just buying the Machop itself isn't going to get us much. If you go to your Pokedex, Machop is only listed as owned, not caught, and we want caught entries. So Pokemon received via trading or buying do not count as caught in your Pokedex. Their evolutions, on the other hand, do. If we take that Machop we've just bought and level it up to get Machoke and then trade it and trade it back to get Machamp, the Pokedex lists these Pokemon as caught, meaning that we can add two to our total. I really only suggest buying really bad extremely rares that no one wants and evolving them so you can get their evolutions dexed. However, this also works with pretty much any other Pokemon that can evolve. Also, in order to get trade evolution Pokemon in your decks, trade your Pokemon to your trade partner, then have them click no when the evolution prompt pops up. Then all you have to do is have them trade it back to you and you can evolve it yourself. By the way, there's one small note I should mention as well. Some Pokemon have rare or very rare spawns in the early game, but when you get a little farther in, they're now suddenly commons. Take Gyarados for example. Gyarados can be found while fishing as a very rare on multiple Kanto routes. However, once you get to around five island, it's now a common encounter. It's just something small and really only applies to a handful of Pokemon, but just check to make sure that you're not hunting a Pokemon that might have a higher encounter chance in later areas. Now that I've gone over almost all the information you need to know, I'm going to explain how this video is going to work. So yes, I will technically be sifting through every route and area in the game to figure out how easily you can get to 350 decks. However, there are a couple restrictions, rules, and other notes that I'm going to be laying out. First, please remember that this video is not meant to be followed fully or closely in any manner. This achievement is an open book and you can do this however you want. The way I go about doing and explaining it might not be the best or most efficient way for you specifically, but it's definitely a possible way of doing it. Second, please understand that this whole achievement is going to take time and effort. Regardless of how you go about doing this achievement, you need to be incredibly dedicated to finish this. There's no easy way out, unfortunately. You'll either be trying to find rare Pokemon, 
grinding money, grinding prize shop tokens, or doing something else. It's just how the game works, it's supposed to be grindy, and items such as evolution stones are going to be expensive. So if you were looking for an easy grind, maybe a couple days or something, it's just not gonna happen. Third, I highly recommend having gold membership active during this whole process. It boosts all encounter rates except for commons by 50%, making encountering rarer Pokemon so much easier. If you have limited access to GM tickets, just remember to use them when you plan to play for a long time. Fourth, like I mentioned before, I'll be capping all of my encounters at the 8th gym in Unova, which means I will have access to every route and area in the game besides paid or other locked areas. Additionally, I will assume that I don't have the Ancient Key and can't access Ancient Cave. I will also be assuming that I'm not willing to spend the money to go into Altering Cave. Other than that, every other area is open, with the exception of the Safari Zones, which I'll get into in a moment. Fifth, I will be excluding extremely rares entirely. A base encounter rate of 1 in 5,000 is a pretty tedious grind for the average player, and I still want to try to make this as accessible as possible. Sixth, I will be excluding Swarm and event-exclusive Pokemon. They're too situational and may not be available often enough. However, I do highly recommend hunting them as they're far easier to encounter than a lot of other Pokemon. If you do end up using this video as a basis, please save yourself some time and go for some Swarm or event exclusive Pokemon. Seventh, I will only be allotting myself access to one Safari Zone, meaning that I'll choose one of the four that are currently in the game that gives us the best value. Additionally, we will be paying a visit to the Battle Zone to catch a few Pokemon, so please make sure you have at least 50,000 ready to take a ferry there. This isn't as bad as the Safari Zones though, since you can heal at one of the Poke Centers and not have to pay a re-entry fee. And eighth, some Pokemon that are available early might not be caught at their first appearance. For some Pokemon, it's better to get them later rather than sooner as they may have different rarities or spawn with less Pokemon in the encounter table. For example, we aren't going to be catching Shelter until we hit Johto as it doesn't spawn by itself until then. Given that it's rare, having a spawn by itself or a solo spawn as it's often called is a great thing to have and saves a lot of time. So here's how I'm going to structure this. We'll be going through every route in the game and checking off every Pokemon we can at the best possible location for them. On screen below each of the Pokemon listed off, if that Pokemon can evolve, their evolution method will be listed below them. If you don't know how to evolve a certain Pokemon, just refer to that little blurb of text. During the first run, we'll be catching all of the commons, uncommons, and rares that we can. Remember that some may be held off until later due to better rarity or a solo spawn. Then we'll be buying some evolution stones from the global marketplace to evolve anything that needs a stone to evolve. Buying evolution stones is far easier than hunting Pokemon. After that, we'll do a second run to get our solo spawn very rares, and then after those, we'll catch any very rares that don't have solo spawns, with a couple stone evolutions here and there if we need to. And lastly, we'll buy our safari ticket of choice and catch everything we can. Alright, I think I've gone over everything. You ready? Alright, here we go. Let's start in Pallet Town. Here you can catch Magikarp and Krabby by fishing, and Tentacool by surfing. The other two rares can be found by themselves later in the game, so we'll get to them later in this video. By evolving them into Gyarados, Kingler, and Tentacruel, we can start with a nice healthy total of six. Route 1 has Pidgey and Rattata. Evolve both of them to get Pidgeotto, Pidgeot, and Raticate. In Viridian City, you can catch Goldeen and Poliwag by fishing. Evolve both of them to get Sea King and Poliwhirl. We'll deal with stone evolutions later, so we'll be sticking with Poliwhirl for now. We don't need to catch two, as we're not getting Politoed since it evolves with a specific item. Route 22 has Spiro and Ekans, as well as Mankey as a rare. Evolve them all to get Fero, Arbok, and Primeape. Route 2 has Caterpie, Weedle, and Bellsprout. Evolve all of them to get Metapod, Kakuna, Beedrill, Butterfree, and Weepin' Bell. Victory Bell's a stone evolution, so we won't be covering it just yet. Viridian Forest and Deep Viridian Forest have Pokemon we already have, so moving on to Route 3, we can catch both Nidorans. Evolve both of them to get Nidorino and Nidorina. Nidoking and Nidoqueen aren't available yet, as they need a Moonstone to evolve, which is one of the rarest stones in the entire game. Heading to Mount Moon, we can catch Zubat, Geodude, Paris, and Sandshrew. Evolving all of them gives us Golbat, Crobat through Friendship, Graveler, Golem by Trading, Parasect, and Sandslash. 
Route 4 has a solo spawn for Horsey while fishing, so this is the best location to pick it up. Evolve it to get Seedra. We won't be covering Kingdra in this video because it evolves with a dragon scale. On routes 24 and 25, we can pick up Oddish. Evolve it to get Gloom. Vile Plume and Velasum are only obtained through Evolution Stones. Skipping routes 5 and 6, Drowsy has a solo rare spawn on Route 11, so go ahead and pick it up here. Evolve it to get Hypno. In Diglett's Cave, we can pick up Diglett and Dugtrio. We're not even halfway through Kanto and we already have over 50 Pokemon. In the Power Plant on Route 10, we can pick up Voltorb as a common and Magnemite as a rare. Evolve them to get Electrode and Magneton. Since we're assuming that we've pretty much beaten the game by this point, we can go down to the Power Plant basement to catch Emolga. Skipping Rock Tunnel, we can head to the Pokemon Tower in Lavender Town where we can catch Ghastly and Haunter. Evolve Haunter by trading it to get a Gengar, or you can alternatively get a Gengar at Mount Pyre entrance in Hoenn. Skipping routes 7 and 8, we can catch Coughing and Grimer in Celadon City through surfing and fishing respectively. Evolve them to get Weezing and Muck. Man, this city's got some really polluted water. After we catch these, we'll only have to head back to mainland Kanto for one more Pokemon later on. So for now, we're just gonna go ahead and head to the Sevi Islands. Treasure Beach on one island has Meowth as an uncommon, which is the lowest rarity you can find it at. Evolve it to get Persian. In Hellfire Cavern on one island, you can catch Slugma. You can either evolve it to get Macargo, or you can catch Macargo later in the game. Next, we can catch Meryl as an uncommon and Wooper as a rare through surfing in the first area of Four Island. Evolve them both to get Azumarill and Quagsire. At Memorial Pillar on Five Island, we can catch Hopip as a rare either in the grass or while surfing. Evolve it to get Skip Plume and then Jump Pluff. We'll be skipping Water Labyrinth, but we will have to take a quick trip through it to get to Lost Cave, where we can catch Mistrevis as a rare. Miss Magius is a stone evolution, so it won't be included yet. We'll be skipping the first area of Six Island, as well as Water Path, but be sure to stick around as we can catch Ladybug and Spinarak at Pattern Bush. We can also catch Apom here as a rare. Evolve them to get Ledian, Ariados, and Ambipom. We'll be skipping Outcast Island, Outcast Cave, Ruin Valley, and the first area of Seven Island. Be sure to stay on Seven Island though, as in Sea Vault Canyon, we can catch Sentret as an uncommon. You could technically get this at Water Path on Six Island, but it's a solo spawn here. Not like it's gonna make any difference, it's an uncommon. Evolve it to get Furret. Heading back to mainland Kanto, we're pretty much done as we only have one more Pokemon to pick up. In the lowest floor of Cerulean Cave, we can catch Dunsparce as a rare. With Dunsparce caught, we're finishing Kanto with a total of 84 Pokemon. Let's move on to Johto. Technically, routes 26 and 27 are in Kanto, but since you only have access to them after beating the Kano Elite 4, I'm putting them under Johto. Here you can catch Hoot Hoot as an uncommon in the grass, as well as Shelter as a rare through fishing. I held off Shelter until now as there wasn't an area with a solo spawn until Johto. Evolve Hoot Hoot to get knocked out, however we can't evolve Shelter yet as it requires an evolution stone. We'll be skipping New Bark Town, Route 29, Cherry Grove City, Routes 30 and 31, Violet City, and Sprout Tower as they only have Pokemon we've already caught. Take a quick detour to the ruins of Alf to catch Unown before heading to the next route. On Route 32, there's a rare solo spawn for Quillfish through fishing. We'll be skipping Union Cave, Route 33, and Slowpoke Well. In Ilex Forest, you can catch Pineco as a solo rare spawn. Be sure to take a Pokemon with the Damp ability since this thing has Explosion. Evolve it to get Foratris. At National Park, we can catch Sunkern as a rare, though we can't evolve it yet as it's a stone evolution. Next are routes 38 and 39, which are both one of the only areas in the entire game you can get Snubble at. It's a rare, but regardless of how far you are into the game, this is never a solo spawn, so I suggest just picking it up here. Evolve it to get Granbull. Next, we'll be skipping another big chunk of areas. We'll be skipping Olivine City, routes 40 and 41, the Whirl Islands, pretty much all of Lost Meadows, 
and routes 47 and 48. There's a few Pokemon we could go get in the Johto Safari Zone, such as Azuril, Smeargle, and Carnivine, but for now, we'll just leave and save ourselves the 80,000. Interestingly, the Johto Safari Zone is the only place in the entire game where you can catch Zigzagoon, which makes Zigzagoon rarer than its evolution. That doesn't make any sense. If you do want to go in, you can catch a couple Hoenn Pokemon early, like Surskit, Spinda, and Corefish, along with some others, which will give you a big head start. However, these have regular spawns on later routes, so I just really wouldn't waste the money. Next, we can catch Venonat on Route 43 as a solo rare. Evolve it to get Venomoth. And lastly, we can catch Remoraid through fishing on Route 44. Evolve it to get Octillery. And surprisingly, that's everything we're catching in Johto as a common, uncommon, or rare encounter without going into the Safari Zone. There are some Pokemon like Metatite and Chatot that we could have picked up, however these can be found as solo spawns in Sinnoh. We're ending Johto with just under 100 Pokemon, with a total of 98. Let's move on to Hoenn. Heading to Route 101, we can catch Linoon and Wurmple. A quick note about Wurmple, currently there's a bug that's just not allowing it to evolve for some reason. So for right now, you can go catch Silcoon and Cascoon on Route 204 in Sinnoh in order to fill these dex entries. If the bug has been fixed by the time you're watching this video, evolving a few Wurmples gets us Silcoon and Cascoon. You can also evolve these into Beautyfly and Dust Docks, however these are commons on Route 102. Speaking of that, on Route 102, we can catch Beautyfly and Dust Docks, as well as Surskit as an uncommon. You can also pick up Corefish here as a rare while fishing. Lotad, Seedot, and Poochiana have better spawns on later routes, so we'll hold them off for now. Evolve Surskit to get Masquerade, and Corefish to get Crawdont. On Route 104, you can catch Wingull as an uncommon while surfing. You can either evolve it to get Pelipper, or you can catch one while surfing as an uncommon on Route 115. In Petalburg Woods, we'll be catching Taylo as an uncommon. You can either evolve it to get Swallow, or you can alternatively head to, again, Route 115 to catch it as an uncommon. Funnily enough, we'll be skipping Route 115 unless you want to pick up Pelipper or Swallow, so our next stop is Route 116. Here, you can catch Explout, which will help you a lot since it'll save you some grinding once you get Wismer. You might also be spending a bit longer here as this is the best place to get Skitty and the only place in the entire game to get Ninkata. Evolve Ninkata with an open slot in your team to get Ninjask and Shedinja. Skitty can't evolve yet as it requires a Moonstone. Next is Rusturf Tunnel and the only spawn here is Wismer, so make sure you pick one up. Evolve Wismer into Loudred, but not Exploud as we just caught one. You can also catch Loudred as a common in Mount Coronet in Sinnoh. On Route 110, we can catch Shellos as an uncommon. After catching it, evolve Shellos into Gastrodon. Route 117 is one of the only spots in the game to get Volbeat and Illumise, so it might take you a bit to get these two. On Route 111, you can catch Cacnea as a solo rare spawn, which is nice considering the hell you probably just went through to get the last few rares. Evolve it to get Cacturn. On Route 112, you can catch Poochiana as a solo rare spawn. This is why I held it off, if you run into a rare, you're guaranteed to get a Poochiana on this route. Evolve it to get Mightyena. On Route 113, you can catch Spinda as a solo rare spawn. Route 114 is where I recommend you catch Seedot and Lotad. They're both rares on this map, so if you don't get one, you'll get the other. Evolving both of them gives you Nuzleaf and Lombre. We won't be getting Shiftry and Ludicolo just yet, as they're stone evolutions. Swinging back to Mauville City and heading east, on routes 118 and 119, you can catch Kecleon as a solo rare spawn. At Mount Pyre on Route 122, on the outside areas you can catch Chimaco and LGM. Evolve LGM to get Bihia. There's a couple Pokemon we could go get in the Hoenn Safari Zone, however it's like 400k a ticket, so we'll swing back to this if we pick this Safari Zone. Our next stop is the Cave of Origin in Sutopolis City, where we can catch Shroomish as a guaranteed rare spawn. Evolve Shroomish to get Breloom. Our last Pokemon for Hoenn is Love Disk, which is a common encounter while fishing on Route 129. 
If you have the Ancient Key and have access to Ancient Cave, you can get a few more Pokemon like Vivian and Drifblim, but nothing you couldn't just go get in Sinnoh. Speaking of Sinnoh, let's move on to the next region. Starting on Route 201, we can catch Krikatot as an uncommon and Bidoof as a rare. Evolve both of them to get Krikatoon and Bibarel. On Route 219, south of Sand Gem Town, we can catch Finneon as a rare while fishing. Evolve it to get Lumineon. Skipping a few towns and routes, on Route 207, we can catch Stunky as a rare. Evolve it to get Skuntank. On Route 205, east of Floroma Town, we can catch Pachirisu. Unfortunately, it's not a solo spawn, so you might spend a bit here. Skipping Routes 206, Eterna Forest, and a couple other areas in Mount Coronet Center, we can catch Chingling as a rare. On Route 213, we can catch Chadot as a solo rare spawn. Next is the Sinnoh Safari Zone, which has a lot of exclusive Pokemon such as Skiddo and Carablast. However, it's still 400k a ticket, so we'll swing back later if we need to. In the Pokemon Mansion backyard, we can pick up Azuril as an uncommon, as well as Plusle, Minin, and Cast Form as rares. On Route 208, we can catch Combi as an uncommon. Evolve it to get Vespaquin. Heading west on Route 218, we can catch Glamiao as a rare. Evolve it to get Perugly. Iron Island is a little area that can be accessed by surfing up from Canalave City and going through Route 231. Inside, we can catch Clink as a rare. Evolve it to get Clang and Clink Clang. On routes 216 and 217, we can catch Metatite as a rare. Technically, you could have gotten this in Johto or Hoenn, but it wasn't a solo spawn. Evolve it to get Metacham. And lastly, in Sinnoh Victory Road, we can catch Dwebble through land encounters and Stunfisk through fishing as uncommons. Evolve Dwebble to get Crustal. We'll be taking a trip to the battle zone when we go over our very rares, but we'll just skip it for now. Okay, really quickly, you can go catch Scraggy and Esper in Deep New and Full Moon Islands respectively if you'd like to pick up an extra four Pokemon for your decks. These count as battle zone areas and aren't able to be accessed until you beat the Sinnoh Elite Four. If you're up to spend about 100k and have at least a Teleport Alakazam ready to grind here, I highly recommend picking up these two. For the sake of this example though, we'll be skipping them. Okay, back to the video. We're ending Sinnoh with a total of 166, which is just shy of half of what we need to complete this achievement. With that, we can head to the last region we'll be covering, Unova. On Unova Route 1, we can catch Patrat as a common, Lillipup as an uncommon, and Basculin as a rare through fishing. Evolve Patrat to get Watchhog, and Lillipup to Herdier, and then Stoutland. You can alternatively find Stoutland as an uncommon on Unova Route 2. On Unova Route 2, we can catch Purloin as an uncommon. Evolve it to get Lipard. You can also catch Lipard as an uncommon in the Dream Yard. Heading to the Dream Yard and going down this set of stairs, in the Dream Yard Lab, we can catch Muna as a rare. We won't be evolving it just yet as it requires a Moonstone. At Outer Pinwheel Forest, we can catch Pit of as a rare. Evolve it to get Tranquil, and then Unpheasant. Inside Pinwheel Forest, we can catch Venipede. Evolve Venipede into Whirlipede, and then into Skullipede. In Relic Passage Center, we can catch a Lomomola as a rare solo spawn while surfing. On Unova Route 5, we can catch Smeargle as a solo rare spawn. On Unova Route 6, we can catch Deerling as a rare. Unfortunately, Deerling only ever spawns with two or more rares in the spawn set, so this is the best route to pick it up. Evolve it to get Sawsbuck. In Charged Stone Cave, we can catch Tynamo. Evolve it to get Electric, but not Electros, as it requires an Evolution Stone. On Unova Route 9, we can catch Bufalant and Gulpin as rares. We could have gotten Gulpin all the way back in Hoenn, however, it's far easier to get it here. Have you seen the Route 110 spawns? They're crazy. Evolve Gulpin to get Swalot. On Unova Route 13, we'll be catching Drifloon. Evolve it to get Drifblim. And lastly, on Unova Route 18, we can catch Carnivine. With our cap of the 8th Gym of Unova, we've now caught all the commons, uncommons, and rares that we have access to. We're ending with a total of 193, which is a little over half of what we need to complete this achievement. 
Now that we've caught all the commons, uncommons, and rares, we can get some stone evolutions out of the way. I feel that most players would find it easier just to buy evolution stones from people on the global marketplace than to try and go out and hunt very rares. For the most part, we won't be covering Pokemon that evolve with specific items, such as King's Rock or Dragon Scale, as those items tend to be more expensive and rarer than your typical evolution stones, but we'll get to that in a little bit. With the Pokemon we've already caught, in order to evolve all of them, we would need one Dusk Stone, one Thunderstone, two Sun Stones, three Leaf Stones, three Water Stones, and four Moon Stones. Moon Stones can be quite expensive, however, if you've been grinding during all of your catching, you should have enough money. If you're following along, you can just skip ahead and come back to any Evolution Stone you missed. After buying and using our Evolution Stones, we can evolve Poliwhirl to get Poliwrath, Gloom to Blossom, Gloom to Vileplume, Mistrevis to Miss Magius, Shelder to Cloyster, Sunkern to Sunflora, Lombre to Ludicolo, Nuzleaf to Shiftry, Weepin' Bell to Victory Bell, Nidorino to Nido King, Nidorina to Nido Queen, Skitty to Delcaddy, Muna to Musharna, and Electric to Electros. With some stone evolutions taken care of, we can now move on to the very rares. Because very rares have a 1 in 600 base chance of appearing, it can sometimes be a little time consuming to encounter one. For that reason, I think it's best to start with the very rares that have a solo spawn, and then move on to the ones that don't. To start, we can catch Pichu in Viridian Forest. Evolve Pichu through happiness to get Pikachu, or if you want to spend a bit extra time, you can hunt Pikachu by itself on Route 10. I don't necessarily recommend this though, as it'll probably take you less time to just evolve it through happiness. We'll circle back and do another round of Evolution Stones to get Raichu once we're done with this section. On Route 3 and inside Mount Moon, we can technically go catch Jigglypuff and Clefairy, however we'll be catching their pre-evolutions later in this video. If you'd like to skip all the happiness training when we get to those, you can just come hunt them here. On Routes 24 and 25, we can catch Abra. Make sure you take a Pokemon with the ability Arena Trap like Doug Trio, so it doesn't teleport away from you. Evolve it to get Kadabra, and then trade it to get Alakazam. After that, we're heading back to Diglett's Cave to catch Makuhita. Evolve it to get Hariyama. In the Pokemon Tower on Floors 3, 4, 5, and 7, we can catch Cubone. Evolve it to get Marowak. On Routes 16 and 17, we can catch Doduo. Evolve it to get Dodrio. On Routes 13 and 14, we can catch Ditto. Skipping ahead to the Sevi Islands, at Treasure Beach on one island, we can catch Tangla. Alternatively, you can pick it up on Route 21. Evolve it to get Tangrowth. Similarly on one island, we can catch Ponyta on Kindle Road. Evolve it to get Rapidash. Next, I recommend catching Staryu through fishing in Turtle Cove. However, Turtle Cove has a fishing level requirement of 20. If you're not at fishing level 20, you can easily pick this up right outside by fishing in the distant isles. Go check out my fishing guide for more information. It's a Waterstone evolution, so we'll circle back to it once we're done. Heading to Four Island, we can catch Slowpoke through surfing. Evolve it to get Slowbro. We won't be getting Slowking as it evolves with a specific item. In Lost Cave on Five Island, we can catch Murkrow. Again, it's a stone evolution. We'll be heading back to mainland Kanto for our last solo very rare, where we can catch Psyduck through surfing on the second floor of Victory Road. Evolve it to get Golduck. We end Kanto with a total of 229. Now let's move on to Johto. In New Bark Town, we can catch Chinchow through fishing. Evolve it to get Lantern. Skipping all the way to the Whirl Islands, we can catch Seal on all floors. Evolve it to get Dugong. Also in the Whirl Islands, we can catch Mantine through fishing on the lowest floor. At the Lake of Rage, we can catch Execute. We won't be getting Executor just yet, as it's a stone evolution. And lastly, we can catch Wobbuffet in Dark Cave. Remember how I said you should abuse swarms? Well, this is one of those instances. I would highly recommend picking up a Why Not from a swarm because then you get two Pokedex entries instead of one by just evolving your Why Not. However, you may get super unlucky and aren't online when a Why Not swarm is active, so let's just add Wobbuffet to the total for now. 
With Johto done, we end with a total of 236, which is only 7 Pokemon higher than we ended with in Kanto. Let's head to Hoenn. On routes 105 and 106, we can catch Whalmer while fishing. Evolve it to get Whalord. On Route 110, we can catch Electrike. Evolve it to get Manectric. While fishing on Route 111, we can catch Barboach. Evolve it to get Wishcash. In Fiery Path, we can catch Torkoal, and at Jagged Pass, we can catch Spoink. Evolve Spoink to get Grumpig. On Route 118, we can catch Carvana through fishing. Evolve it to get Sharpedo. In Mount Pyre Entrance, we can catch Shuppet. Evolve it to get Bayonet. And lastly, on Route 124, we can catch Clam Pearl while surfing. You can also catch it while fishing on Route 219 in Sinnoh. We won't ever be evolving this because it evolves with two of the most expensive evolution items. We end our Hoenn total with 250 Pokemon. 100 more Pokemon to go. Next is Sinnoh. On Route 205, we can catch Buizel. Evolve it to get Floatzel. In the old chateau at the back of Eterna Forest, we can catch Rotom. It doesn't really matter what form you get, it'll still register in your Pokedex, but if you're wondering, the best form is Rotom Wash. And surprisingly, that's pretty much all we can catch in Sinnoh. But there's one Pokemon I'd like to briefly mention. Starly. The reason I'm not including Starly in this total is that this thing is incredibly hard to wall and catch. With Brave Bird and Final Gambit, it's a nightmare to catch this thing without a specific wall for it. I won't be adding it to my total, however, if you do decide to go catch this, please make sure to either bring a Jellicent or a base form Rotom to wall it. If you don't, you might have several of them die from recoil damage. If you do have a wall for it, however, you'll be adding another three to your dex total. You can either catch it on Route 212A as a solo spawn, or it can be a swarm Pokemon. For this video, however, we won't be adding it. With Sinnoh covered and 253 caught Pokemon to our name, Let's enter Unova. Unova routes mostly consist of very rares with two or more spawns, however there's still a few solo spawns that we can pick up here. Starting in Wellspring Cave, we can catch Woobat on both floors. Evolve it through Friendship to get Swoobat. Heading to Unova Route 3, we can catch Corsola through Fishing. In Castellia Sewers, we can find Trubbish. Evolve it to get Garboder. In Relic Passage Center, we can find Relicanth through fishing. And lastly, on the second floor of Dragon Spiral Tower, we can catch Houndour. Evolve it to get Houndoom. Our total with all of the solo very rare spawns ends up at 261. However, there's a couple more we can get. By going to the battle zone and healing in a Pokemon Center there, you can essentially make it your hub whenever you use an escape rope and don't have to waste money taking fairies. In order to grind here, the bare minimum should be a Teleport Alakazam with a Choice Scarf. By heading to the Battle Zone, we can catch Trap Inch on Route 228 and Hapini on Route 230. You can also catch Trap Inch on Route 111, however, it's not a solo spawn. Evolve Trap Inch to Vibrava and then to Flygon. We won't be evolving Hapini as it requires a specific item. With the battle zone included, our total comes out to 265 Pokemon, which is all of the very rares that have a solo spawn that we have access to. Now let's do another round of evolution stones. To get this out of the way quickly, to evolve all of our Pokemon that need evolution stones, we will need one Water Stone, one Dusk Stone, one Thunderstone, and one Leaf Stone. With our stones bought, we can evolve Pikachu to Raichu, Staryu to Starmie, Murkrow to Honchkrow, and Execute to Exeggutor. Now the real challenge begins. In order to reach our goal of 350, we'll have to catch 81 more Pokemon. Since we're doing this without catching any Swarm or Event exclusives, that means we'll have to solely rely on Very Rares that share a spawn set with other Very Rares. I never said this was going to be easy. Obviously, again, this can be heavily mitigated by actually catching these exclusive Pokemon when you get the chance. You could also just get lucky and get a random extremely rare. Just had to slide another reminder in there. Ready? Alright, here we go. Heading back to Kanto, we can catch Vulpix and Growlithe on Route 7. These are both stone evolutions, so we'll swing back later to evolve them. 
Surprisingly enough, that's all I really recommend going back to Kanto for. Next is Johto. On routes 38 and 39, we can catch Miltank and Tauros. In the Lost Meadows, north of Cianwood, we can catch Cleffa and Igglybuff. These two spawn in pretty much all grass in every area here, however, I recommend grinding in Lettuce Cave for that small chance you get a Chikorita. Evolve both of them through Friendship to get Clefairy and Jigglypuff. We'll be coming back to these later to evolve them with Moonstones. And on Route 45 south of Blackthorn City, we can catch Teddy Ursa and Fanpy. You can also catch Fanpy as a Swarm Pokemon. Evolve them both to get Ursa Ring and Donphan. That's all for Johto, so let's head to Hoenn. On Route 117 west of Mauville, we can catch Natu and Mareep. These two could have also been caught in Johto, however, it's better to get them here as they're the only two VRs on this route. Evolve Natu to Zatu, and Mareep to Flaffy, and then to Ampharos. In Meteor Falls, we're able to catch Solrock and Lunatone. Make sure you take a Pokemon with the Damp ability as they both have Explosion. On Route 114, we're able to catch Zangoose and Saviper. On Route 120, we can catch Absol. Lastly, in Hoenn Victory Road, we can catch Aeron. Evolve it to get Laeron, and then Agron. That's it for Hoenn, so let's head to Sinnoh. On Route 221, we can catch Girafferig. We technically could have also got this in Johto, but this is the best route to get it. On Route 204, we can catch Shinx. It's only Starly and Shinx here, so this is the best route to get it at. Evolve it to get Luxio, and then Luxray. And lastly, in Mount Coronet, on floors 4, 5, 6, and 7, we can catch Nosepass. We've cleared Sinnoh, so let's head to Unova. On Unova Route 3, we can catch Yanma. Technically, we could have gotten this all the way back in Johto, but it's best to get it here. Evolve it to get Yanmega. In Outer Pinwheel Forest, we can catch Timber. Timber's a pretty hard Pokemon to get, with every area that it spawns in having at least two other very rares, so you might be spending a bit more time here. Evolve it to get Girder, and then Kinkelder through trading. In Relic Passage Center, we can catch Drillbur. Evolve it to get Excadrill. At the Desert Resort, we can catch Maractus and Sigilyph. On the first floor of Relic Castle, we can catch Baltoy. Remember to bring a Pokemon with the Damp ability as this thing has Explosion. Evolve it to get Claydol. Sigilyph is also down here, so if you end up getting a Maractus first in the Desert Resort, I recommend just heading down here. On Unova Route 5, we can catch Gothita. Evolve it to get Gotharita, and then Gothitelle. At the Moor of Icarus, we can catch Krogunk. Evolve it to get Toxicroak. And lastly, in Giant Chasm Cave, we can catch Roggenrola. Friendly reminder that Roggenrola is also a Swarm Pokemon, so I of course recommend picking it up while a Swarm is active. Regardless of how you get it, evolve it into Boldor, and then trade it to get Gigalith. That's all for Unova, but we'll be taking a small trip back to the Battle Zone for two more Pokemon. Magby can be found on Route 227, and Ferrisseed on Route 225. You could have gotten Ferrisseed way earlier than this, however the routes in the Battle Zone have a 1 out of 2 chance for Ferrisseed instead of a 1 out of 3 that the other areas do. Remember to take a Pokemon with the Damp ability to Wall Ferrisseed. It has Explosion. Evolve Ferrisseed to Ferrothorn, and Magby to Magmar. We won't be getting Magmortar as it evolves with a special item. With that, that is every single very rare you can catch without entering any safari zones, hunting in any swarms, or hunting on event maps. We only have a couple stone evolutions this time around, so go ahead and pick up two Firestones to get Ninetales and Arcanine, and two Moonstones for Clefable and Wigglytuff. But hold on, we're not done yet. I left one out. You may have noticed that I left out one Pokemon. Chansey. That's because Chansey's a bit of a special case. Every single route or area that this thing spawns on before Unova Victory Road has at least four to five other very rares in the spawn set. That's f***ing insane. Even if you get to Unova Victory Road Cave North where it's a one and two, it's still completely inefficient to grind there since the spawns are all over the place. There's a catch though. This thing is a swarm Pokemon. 
that's picked pretty commonly too. So just save yourself the sanity and go get one while there's a swarm active. Or I guess roll one from the battle queue if you want to, I, I don't know. For this example though, let's say we either got lucky as hell and got one on Route 210A or something, or the Hapini we caught earlier dropped an oval stone. Evolve it through happiness to get Blissey. With Chansey caught, we're almost at our goal. We only need 22 more Pokemon to get the achievement. With accessibility in mind, we'll only be choosing one of the four Safari Zone tickets to purchase. Immediately off the bat, the Kano Safari Zone is already off the table as it only has Pokemon we already have. The Johto Safari Zone would get us Zigzagoon. Not the best use of 80,000. The Hoenn Safari Zone would get us Frillish. Definitely not the best use of 400,000. It does slightly make up for it with Surfboard and Miracle Berry drops, but it's just still not a great spot. The Sinnoh Safari Zone would get us Cherubi, Scatterbug, Burmy, Binacle, Carablast, Skiddo, Skrelp, Inkay, and Shelmet. Assuming you get lucky and you're at fishing level 60, that's a lot of potential Pokemon, and you can get Surfboard drops while grinding here. I think you know which one we're getting. There's a couple downsides though, one is of course the 400k price tag, which to the average player is a little expensive. The other is that you can only fish here if you're at fishing level 60, which I recommend achieving if you're planning to hunt here as it's better to level fishing than drop a few dex entries. Go check out my fishing guide if you want to learn more. That leaves us with Cherubi and Scatterbug as uncommons, Burmy, Caravlast, Skiddo, and Shelmet as rares, and Binacle, Inkay, and Skrelp as very rares. If you decide to buy this ticket, you can go ahead and catch Ferrisseed here too, as it's a lot easier to wallet here due to it not having boosted stats. Remember to take a damp Pokemon for Ferrisseed. If you catch all of these and evolve them, the final list includes Cherubi to Cherim, Scatterbug to Spupa and then to Vivian, a few Burmy to both Mothem and Wormadam, Carablast to Escavalier through trading, Skiddo to Gogoat, Shelmet to Excelgor through trading, Inkay to Malamar, Skrelp to Dragalge, and Binacle to Barbarical. With that, we end with a grand total of 348, which is just two off of what we need to reach our goal. Now you might be asking the question, what's next? If we've already caught everything up to very rares, What's left? Well, remember how I said we'd be coming back to special evolution items? Well, there's one that's fairly cheap that we can go ahead and buy. The Coronet Rock. It's typically reasonably priced and allows us to get two Pokemon. Magnazone and Probopass. Once we evolve our Magneton and Nosepass, we've finally reached our goal and completed the achievement. By the way, just another reminder that you can just buy the pre-evolutions of Pokemon on the global marketplace instead of hunting them. Though I'd personally only recommend buying three stage extremely rare Pokemon. You won't get the first stage dexed, but you can get their evolutions dexed. It really helps if you're in a pinch. And again, I seriously cannot stress the importance of swarm and event exclusives enough. They're such a great time saver that'll help you cut out a lot of the really tedious grinds out of this video. And like I said, this video isn't really a guide, it's more just general guidelines and recommendations to get you going, and you can go about this however the hell you want. There's multiple different ways you can go about catching Pokemon, however the most efficient way is just to beat the game and then catch everything in order of ease of access. Plus, most of you will probably have a few extra dex entries from random ERs that you found while hunting for these. When you're hunting for this many VRs, it's likely you've already found a couple ERs, so you'll probably have more Pokemon anyways. Like I said in the very beginning of this video, everyone's going to encounter different Pokemon. You can definitely do this in earlier regions like Sinnoh, however you'll need to hunt for rarer Pokemon and catch a lot of event and swarm exclusives. When I first started making this video, I set out to find a definitive way to get this key as early as possible without having to do all this crazy shit like beat the game, catch any super rare Pokemon, or play during specific events. However, as much as I would have loved to have been able to find a relatively easy way to get to 350 without having to jump through so many hoops, I just don't think it's feasible. And I wholeheartedly and genuinely apologize. Still abuse the hell out of swarms and events though, trust me, they'll save you a lot of time. Regardless of how you went about it, you did it. You've finally gotten the Collector 3 achievement. This means that you finally have the ability to go into Mossy Cave and are able to get Megastone drops in certain areas. Let's go over Mossy Cave first. Mossy Cave is... 
well, a cave that's on the right side of Dragon's Den. To get to it, head to Dragon's Den and surf down and to the right to reach it. Alternatively, you can take this shortcut. Don't worry, it's not a bug, this is intended, people have been using this shortcut for years. Inside Mossy Cave, there's a central room and three other caverns. The central room has a couple exclusive Pokemon like Chesspin and has some rocks that you can mine. The three other caverns also have some exclusive Pokemon, but they also allow you to have a chance of encountering the three legendary beasts in their respective caverns. Thunder Cavern for Raikou, Fire Cavern for Entei, and Water Cavern for Suicune. You don't need your lead Pokemon to hold an item to encounter these like with the legendary birds, however you can enhance an evolution stone to increase your encounter rate. You can make an enhanced evolution stone by combining three evolution stones with a legendary bait in the crafting interface. Then make your lead Pokemon hold it to increase your encounter rate by 20% for these legendaries. Thunderstone for Raikou, Firestone for Entei, and Waterstone for Suicune. Go check out my legendary hunting guide that I did a while back for more information. You can also get a couple exclusive items that can drop in all caverns. The Shed Shell can drop here, however, it's so incredibly common that it's really not worth much, so don't get too excited if you get one to drop. Additionally, you can also get exclusive Fossil Shards here. Sail Shards, Cover Shards, Plume Shards, and Jaw Shards are all available here. Which one you get is completely random, and unfortunately, we don't know the drop rate of these. Obviously, just like the other fossil shards, you need to get a hundred of them in order to get a Pokemon from the scientist at Cinnabar Island. Sail shards get you Amara, cover shards get you Tirtuga, plume shards gets you Arkin, and jaw shards get you Tyrant. All areas in this cave also have a chance for wild Pokemon to drop Mega Stones, but we'll be covering that in its own section in just a bit. One other small thing I should mention is that there's a fishing level requirement of 75 in order to fish here. There's not a lot to fish for here anyways, but I thought I should mention it. Now the big question is, how do you effectively grind in here? There are some Pokemon uh, that might be a little difficult to take down, and if you're just using any old team, you're not gonna have fun. Each area of the cave has a different spawn set, so there's a couple different team options you can use depending on which area you're grinding in. Huge, huge, huge shoutouts to QAZ for his great grinding guide, which I'll be using as a basis for these teams. I highly recommend checking out his guide on the forums by clicking the link in the description. It's got a lot of great information. Also, go check out my legendary hunting guide for more information on hunting the legendary beasts, such as best nature, and movesets. I'll be laying out a list of individual team options for leads, counters, and walls if you'd like to build your own team, and then I'll give you a couple of example team compositions. One of which is super cheap and will get you in there and comfortably grinding the fastest, and one of which is more expensive but will overall make your grind go a lot smoother and is more kill oriented. The cheap teams mostly consist of teleport Alakazam leads, so just assume you won't be killing any Pokemon if you decide to use those. Information such as Eevees, Natures, Moves, and more will be listed either below or next to the Pokemon on screen. You can pause this video if you'd like to thoroughly look over any particular Pokemon or team composition. Again, huge, huge thank you to QAZ for building these teams and letting me use them in this video. We'll start with the central room, which has Scyther, Klefki, Sandile, and Chespin as extremely rares. If you're interested in hunting here, some good leads are Alakazam, Eveltal, Flail Killers such as Slacking, and Return Users such as Diggersby. A quick note here, a couple Pokemon currently can't learn Endure, which is essential for setting up Flail Grinds. Slacking is one of the only ones that can still learn Endure, so it's a great option for kill grinding. Alakazam can both teleport and reliably kill here while holding choice specs, and Eveltal grinds slightly slower than Slacking. As I said before, Return Diggersby is also a solid option. As for walls, take a Shedinja to wall Chespin and Klefki, and take a defensive Gyarados to wall Scyther and Sandile. For a Sync Pokemon, take an Adamant Sync. You will need a Sync Stone though, as a lead Adamant Alakazam can't kill. The cheapest possible team consists of Teleport Alakazam, Shedinja, Gyarados, and Blissey for extra defensive power. The other two spots are reserved for anything else you might need, such as Elite Killers or Sinks. A more expensive team consists of Slacking, Shedinja, Gyarados, Eveltal, and an Adamant Sink. The last slot can be used for things such as Daycare Mons. 
Next is Mossy Cave Thunder Cavern, which has Helioptile and Elekid as extremely rares and Raikou as a legendary. Good leads consist of Alakazam, Breloom, Primeape, and Dugtrio. Breloom is an alright lead being able to kill with an attack boosting nature, at least a 28 in attack, Technician as its ability, and with Mach Punch and Bullet Seed. Mach Punch Explodes and the rares, and Bullet Seed Golems and Electrodes. You can also run moves such as Spore, Swords Dance, and Power Up Punch for Elites. It can also be ran Itemless, which is a nice perk. However, overall, I recommend the other three over Breloom. Alakazam can both kill and teleport. However, if you plan to teleport, you need at least a 5 IV in speed if you're not sinking a speed boosting nature. If you plan to kill, you need to run a special attack boosting nature like Modest, have at least an 18 IV in special attack, and be holding choice specs in order to kill everything with Psychic. Primeape can kill with Reversal, Endure, and Earthquake. It can also be ran itemless, meaning that you can hold an enhanced Thunderstone. To set up, you need to first use Endure to get yourself down to 1 HP, then you can reliably kill everything with Reversal except for Electrode, which you can just use Earthquake on. Dugtrio is also a great lead as it can kill without an item, meaning that you can hold an enhanced Thunderstone. It also has an encounter boosting ability in Arena Trap, however I don't really recommend running this ability as you can get Mega Stone drops on this map. Also, Arena Trap halves money, which is pretty inconvenient. It does require at least a 25 IV in attack and a 5 IV in speed in order to kill and outspeed everything though. Just use the same setup as Primeape, getting down to 1 HP using Endure, and then use Reversal on everything except for Electrode, which you use Earthquake on. As for walls, just take a Shedinja. It's really the only thing you'll need. As for sinks, Timid, Naive, and Modest are pretty good options. The cheapest team you could possibly use in this area consists of a Teleport, Timid Sink, Alakazam, and a Sharinja, and that's it. The rest of the team is completely up to you. A more expensive and more reliable team for kill grinding consists of Dugtrio, Sharinja, Garchomp for Elites, and a Timid Sink if you have a Sink Stone. Next is Mossy Cave Fire Cavern, which has Numel, Fletchling, and Fennekin as extremely rares, and Entei as a legendary. Good leads consist of Alakazam, Dugtrio, and Primeape. If you plan to teleport with Alakazam, you, again, need at least a 5 in speed. If you plan to kill with it, you'll need a special attack boosting nature with at least an 18 IV in special attack and holding choice specs. Dugtrio is a pretty good lead, using the Endure, Reversal, and Earthquake set with a 25 in attack, 5 in speed, and an adamant nature. However, because you can encounter Drifloon here, you'll need to also be running Rock Slide. Again, it can use an encounter boosting ability, however, I still don't recommend running Arena Trap since you can get a Mega Stone drop here. Primeape is a great lead too, with an attack boosting nature and reversal, beat up, endure, and earthquake. It's a pretty expensive set, but it's a lot more consistent than Dugtrio and can be ran itemless. Everything dies to earthquake except for Golem, Exploud, and Drifloon. Use Reversal on Golem and Exploud, and beat up on Drifloon. As for walls, a defensive Gyarados with max HP and max defense can wall Numel and Fletchling with Intimidate. Blissey or Eviolite Chansey can be used to wall Fennekin while using Minimize, and Flashfire Houndour or Houndoom can be used to fully wall Entei. For sinks, you should be sinking Adamant. A cheap team consists of a Teleport, Adamant Sink, Alakazam, Houndour or Houndoom with the ability Flashfire, and an impish defensive Gyarados. The rest of the team can consist of anything you want. A more expensive team if you're interested in kill grinding consists of Primeape, a Flashfire Houndour or Houndoom, a defensive Gyarados, a Garchomp or Conkelder for elites, and Blissey if you want extra help with walling Pokemon. The last slot should be reserved for a Sync Pokemon if you have a Sync Stone. In order to use this example team properly, however, your Pokemon order is important. You'll need to lead with Primeape, then have your Garchomp or Conkelder next, then your Gyarados. This ensures you'll be able to kill Drifloons with beat up in two or three hits. And last is Mossy Cave Water Cavern, which has Milotic, Sfeel, and Snover as extremely rares, and Suicune as a legendary. Leads consist of Alakazam, which can both teleport and grind here, flail killers like Slacking, and legendaries such as Eveltal and Xerneas. If you plan to teleport with Alakazam, you don't really need a specific setup to teleport here other than being level 100, so you can use pretty much any Alakazam you have access to. 
This allows you to run a bold sync lead more effectively. If you plan to kill grind here, you'll need a special attack boosting nature like Modest with Psychic and Shockwave. Deoxys and Latios can also fill this role by using Psychic and Thunderbolt. Slacking can flail grind effectively here and is also pretty lenient with its stats. Any slacking can work as long as it doesn't have an attack or speed lowering nature. Eveltal and Xerneas can use Dark Pulse and Moon Blast respectively, however they require choice specs. For walls, just take a Shedinja, it walls everything. For sinks, you should be sinking bold or timid. The cheapest team you can possibly use is the exact one we used for Raikou. Teleport timid or bold sink Alakazam, and a Shedinja. You really don't need anything else. If you'd like a team that's more kill-oriented but more expensive, an example team consists of Slacking, Shedinja, Magnazone and Ferrothorn for Elites, and a Timid or Bold Sync if you have a Sync Stone. Now that we've covered some teams and team members to get you going, you're now ready to effectively grind in Mossy Cave. But there's one more thing. Mega Stones. This is the big reason that most of you probably went for this achievement in the first place. Megas are cool, and people want Megas. Simple as that. But what Megas can you actually get? And how can you get them? A decent chunk of Mega Stones are locked behind this achievement, and if you haven't unlocked it, they won't be able to drop from wild Pokemon. These Mega Stones can also be found through several PvP methods as well, including the Battle Tower, Battle Queue, and tournaments, so you're not wholly locked to getting this achievement, however it's often easier just to grind for them. In order to get these specific Mega Stones to drop, you must fulfill two different criteria. One is, of course, to complete the Collector 3 achievement. The other is that you cannot have a Pokemon that has an ability that increases encounter likelihood. Remember what I said about Dugtrio's ability earlier? This is why. Banned abilities include Illuminate, Arena Trap, No Guard, Sticky Hold, and suction cups. Additionally, the ability Compound Eyes does not boost the drop chance of Mega Stones. To get your Mega Stone of choice, you must be on a specific map, fulfill the previously laid out criteria, and you must be killing Pokemon. Mega Stones work like any other dropped item. The base drop rate for Mega Stones on a designated map is 1 in 50,000. However, with a drop rate blessing active, this goes down to 1 in 40,000. There's a few Mega Stones that have a much lower drop rate, closer to around 1 in 33,000. However, this is locked behind the Collector 4 achievement. Those specific Mega Stones can also be found with a base drop rate of 1 in 50k in Mossy Cave anyways. There's also two Mega Stones that have a significantly lower drop chance during Swarms and Gold Rushes respectively, but we'll get into that in a moment. By the way, please note that at the time of me recording this video, all of the Mega Stones haven't been released just yet. Once all the Mega Stones are released, I will be making a separate Mega Stone guide. I'll be listing off every Mega Stone that you can currently only get from drops after getting the achievement, however it'll be a very brief synopsis. This means I won't be going over any of the stones from beating the Elite 4s or obtained from PvP methods. If you'd like more information on Mega Stones, such as drop priority, please check out either the September 25th update week video, or if it's been a year or two, check out the Mega Stone guide that I've inevitably done. Alright, here we go with the Mega Stones. Absolite 1 in 50k on Deep New Moon Island. Aerodactylite, 1 in 50k in Ancient Cave R1, R2, R3, and R4, or a 1 in 15k drop chance during Gold Rushes on the Gold Rush map. Beedrillite, 1 in 50k in the central room of Mossy Cave, or a 1 in 25k drop during a swarm on the swarm map. Cameruptite, 1 in 50k on all Stark Mountain maps. Gyaradosite, 1 in 50k in Mossy Cave Water Cavern, or 1 in 33k in Water Temple. Houndoomanite, 1 in 50k in Mossy Cave Fire Cavern, or 1 in 33k in Ends Castle. Manectite, 1 in 50k in Mossy Cave Thunder Cavern, or 1 in 33k in Ends Castle Basement. Galilitite, 1 in 50k in Frostbite Cave during the Christmas event. Obamasite, 1 in 50k in Frostbite Forest during the Christmas event. And the Slowbro Knight, 1 in 50k on Deep Full Moon Island. With the Mega Stones finally covered, that's everything you need to know about Mossy Cave and the Collector 3 achievement. This has been a highly requested video, so I'm super excited to finally be able to put this out. I also just want to say thank you so, so much to both Amy and QAZ for fact-checking this. I seriously couldn't have made this video without you guys. And I also want to say thank you to you all for watching this all the way through. 
This video took me almost six months to put out with all of the research, proofreading and revising the script, and editing, and I really appreciate you all watching until the end. I really hope this video helped you with getting that achievement or with building a mossy cave team. Don't forget, I have a new Discord server, so if you're interested in joining that, you can click the link in the description. So with that being said, thank you guys so, so much for watching, good luck on your hunts, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.